Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today we're going to talk about selling crypto, more specifically what I will be doing with my crypto, when I'll be selling it, and the percentage and the amounts I will be selling uh, as things come up. So before we get started, we're going to go over a lot of things. Uh, we're going to talk about what everybody should know first, which is uh, how to define yourself as far as your trader type and know your exit. We're going to get some DCA examples. I'm going to talk about everything that starts with uh, Bitcoin, the Pi Cycle Top. Then we're going to get into altcoins and the things that we should be looking at, which is the NUPL, MVRVZ score, risk assessments, those types of things. And lastly, uh, we'll talk about uh, exchanges and the mentality to get through this. So first things first, what I wanna share with you is a quick little story about the Dogecoin millionaire. And this was a great video from Graham Stephen. And he went and just uh, talked to this gentleman, Dogecoin millionaire, who invested uh, roughly $180,000 of his money into Dogecoin when there wasn't really even a penny uh, for quite a long time, quite, quite a long time ago. And it went from less than a penny, there's $180,000, turned into $1.2 million in roughly 69 days. Unfortunately, uh, as time went on, he did the uh, same mistake I think we all do, which is believing that it's going to go to the moon and it's gonna go to a dollar or $2 or whatever it was supposed to be. And unfortunately, as time went on, his portfolio uh, took a look and in uh, not too much time, it was down to $323,000. And that is, uh, this was uh, shot about three months ago or so, and I'm sure it's down even more so. Today, it is September 21st. Bitcoin's around uh, $19,000. Ethereum's around 1,200 and so on and so forth. So I want you to have this ingrained into your memory because Graham's gonna ask him a very simple question and he's gonna answer it. And I want you to remember exactly what he says. Just take a listen. Now, do you regret holding so long? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. You know, human. Uh, yeah, I should have sold some. <laughs> so yeah, that's an understatement. And actually that 1.2 million actually ballooned up to 3 million before it crashed down to probably now around $200,000. So remember, uh, you can write it all the way up and you can write it all the way down. The choice is up to you. Which leads me to my next point, which is there's a phrase I use a lot, which is time in the market is more important than timing the market. And it's very true. I mean, the longer that you stay in, usually the better it is. But that's for a very broad time horizon. I will just remind you that uh, today it's 2022, uh, September, and uh, we are looking at a Bitcoin price of 18846 And as a reminder, uh, if you would have bought... Uh, in December 2017, the 16th of December, you would have been up 19,040. You would be down $1,000 right now on your Bitcoin. Again, it's all about your time horizon and how long you want to uh, expand yourself out. But along the way, there may be opportunities to uh, take some profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. And again, I can not stress this enough. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. You have to do your own research. These are just the things that I am actually doing. So if we take a look here, the thing that we really should be talking about is what everybody should know first, which is before selling or anything, you need to find, you have to define your trader type and you need to know your exit before your entry. What I'm talking about is this. There are many various types of traders out there and investors. There are scalpers, uh, those just take seconds and they move very quickly. Day traders, minutes to hours. You have swing traders, which you could wait, they could open up a position, wait days. Position traders could wait uh, weeks or months. Or then you got somebody like myself is like a cycle trader, which takes years to play out. Now, I kind of uh, go between position trader and a cycle trader uh, because I wait for quite a long time to unpack my bags as they were. And then also, if you wanna just do a, a quick down and dirty example of, of profit, this is the most basic one you could probably think of. So let's just say you wanna, and you wanna know your exit before you get into, this would be an example. You say, okay, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin at whatever it is, $10,000. Bitcoin doubles its price to 20. I'm gonna sell uh, about 11K, which is uh, in my initial position, plus a little bit of profit. And I'm gonna let the $9,000 that I have into Bitcoin just ride. Maybe it goes up to a million dollars and becomes the reserve world currency and I am loaded for the rest of my life. Maybe, but that is just uh, one example. And I will tell you this, uh, for the examples that I've used, the things that I've done, this was my exit strategy uh, last cycle. And uh, it was just taking fractals, just taking a look at uh, where things had gone in the past and extrapolated those numbers to see where they could potentially go. And some were wrong and some were pretty 
pretty solid on. Now, Ethereum was wrong. I thought it was going to, to uh, 10,000. And I would dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. And unfortunately, uh, I was only able to, to pick up the very first point and sold along the way, but not too much. Chainlink, uh, it was actually right. I thought it was, would go to $35. It actually went to $51. And the problem with this one, I think everybody knows, is that unfortunately, I had a plan in place, but I didn't stick to my plan. And if I would have stuck to my plan, I would have made a lot more money uh, on selling off Chainlink because right now it's worth way less than $26. Bitcoin, again, I thought I'd go to, to uh, 150000 That didn't happen. Also, uh, EOS, that did not happen. I thought I'd go to 30 That was a bad one. Cardano, I thought I'd go to $30. It did, roughly. around you know I think it was uh, the all-time high was 297 there. It's number third, so pretty right. And then Theta, I actually got that one right. Uh, I thought I'd go to $10, and it went to $14. But So that these are just the examples I used before. But I think... I think there's a better way. And I put that video out uh, not too long ago. And you can find this uh, on the uh, website at Dan Teaches Crypto, which I took a look at cycle top callers, the Pi cycle top, NUPL time and risk, and also the cycle bottom, MBRVZ, two year MA, 12 multiple and reserve risk to just get a better assessment of what could be considered the actual cycle top. But there's one more thing we really need to answer ourselves. And that is that what kind of investor uh, are you? Because you have to understand that the more conservative you are, the safer you are, but maybe not as great as returns. And this is the thing that I always struggle with. So as an ultra conservative type of investor, uh, that could be you. This is how I started out. 100% of everything I bought was in Bitcoin. And that was it. I didn't do any altcoins, nothing like that. As time went on, I got a little less ultra conservative, just a conservative. And I had have Bitcoin about 90% of my portfolio, then 10% was Ethereum. And then you could go down that rabbit hole and go, well, I'm gonna be a risk taker and I'm gonna go 50% of Bitcoin and maybe 40% in the top 20 and then 10% could be 30 to number 1,000 of, of the cryptos and get really uh, down there. Or you could be just a total degenerate and just go, okay, Bitcoin, I know is the safest one, but I just want a sliver and everything else will be in like the uh, number 200 to 3,000 S coins and things like that. So when you look at these, remember that uh, if you're getting into these investments, uh, the risk versus reward, uh, it is so a lot of these are very risky, but the reward are high. But then of course you have the chance of losing everything. And before you knock any of the uh, degenerate moves, I will just say this: we have two channels. Uh, this is Digital Asset News. The other one is Dan Degen. And so far they've done so well. So Gensu Kishi, Everdome, Fame, and Sweatcoin. I mean, just look, when we got into these prices, uh, again, Tsukishi was 0 0.01, uh, about a penny and a half. All-time high was $1.62. Not too bad. Everdome, Fame, Sweatcoin, so on and so forth. So the thing that you have to remember is when I'm getting into these, these cryptos, what is my risk versus reward? So in a, in the best way to, to, to uh, take a look at that is to show you through a website called dcabtc.com and also uh, dca-cc.com. DCA BTC, it only shows you Bitcoin. I'm just going to show you a, a quick example here. So let's just say, oh, for example, that uh, you have $100 and uh, you want to purchase $100 worth of Bitcoin uh, every week. And if you do that for the last six months, uh, you would be down almost a percentage uh, just buying things because the market's awful. But let's just back this up for a second. Let's just go over the last, I don't know, five years five years and we go five years and we accumulated. And in actuality, if you would have done that $100 every week, you would get $26,100. Uh, your total value uh, for Bitcoin would be $105,000, uh, which is not too bad. However, at the top, it would have been $162,000 depending on when you actually sold. So that's just, that's just Bitcoin itself. What I want to show you, of course, is that's pretty good. It's a very safe, safer play in the most uh, uh, volatile market. But what if you can do that with Ethereum? That's why I like this website, dca-cc. I'm going to do this. Let's do $100 again. And we do that on a weekly basis. And I picked uh, January 12, 2018, which was uh, one of its highs back in the last cycle to today. And I'm going to click on Calculate. And you can just see right here that, yeah, it was a little bit riskier, Ethereum being what it is. Uh, but actually... If you take a look at it, for the, at the peak, you would have invested $20,000, just like we did with Bitcoin, but the balance in fiat or cash would be $339,000. let us take it one step further. Let's go to Cardano. The same thing. Let's, let's change this up. 
let's put $100 every week from the same time frame, January 12, 2018 to September 19th, 2022. And if we do that, and then of course we calculate, we're going to see that in all honesty, we could have done pretty well. And if we go up here to the very tippy top, we would have invested 19,100, somewhere around there. And we would have had $706,480, which is not bad for five years of work at the very top. Now, it's worth much less. And the problem that we have is people always talk about diamond hands and never selling, and they're just going to give this all to their, their, their grandkids and it's generational wealth. Look, if you wanna do that, that's fine. I'm not here to judge you or tell you what to do. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. However, when I think about these things, I think that's not what I'm going to do and these are not my goals. The things that I do are what I do. And of course, you can take this information and roll it into your research to do your best thing for whatever uh, best suits you as far as investments. So I also, when I take a look at this, when everything goes up, you start to think, oh, well, I just need to keep going up and going up because that's what happens in markets, right? Well, no. However, there is an opposite thought process, which is, this is uh, from CNBC, and it talks about how the chart below shows how if you invested $10,000 into the S&P 500 index for a 20-year period between 1999 and 2018, this is how it would have performed. If you had just left it there and never touched it, your $10,000 would be a whopping $30,000, which is pretty good for doing absolutely nothing. I'll be honest with you. And the average annual return is 5.6%. But if you would have just missed 10 of the best days, 10 of the best rallies that were out there, your value would be less than half of what it is. So your average annual return is about 2%. You miss the 20 best, 20 best days, negative 0.3. Miss three best days, and so on and so forth. So again, when we talk about time in the market is more important than timing, that is true. The thing that we have to remember is that at some point, we're going to need to sell, at least for me. That's not for you. And I will just uh, um, finish up with this. Those examples I gave you with Cardano <clears throat> and Ethereum and Bitcoin, and uh, even this one with S&P, uh, things look pretty rosy. But remember, it's still a risky market, no matter where, what you get into. Here's two examples, a dash of salt. So these are two crypto projects that were pretty prevalent in the last uh, 2017 bull run. You can see Dash did an amazing job of going from uh, 11, gosh, three, four dollars, all the way to 1,000, almost 1,500 dollars. And then, of course, what did it do after that? Not much at all. And then off we go, and that's absolutely nothing. And there's a, a worse example here, which is Salt. Salt was a lending platform, did very well. SEC got involved, and uh, there was a lawsuit, and. Uh, it was almost at $15. And what has it done after that? Not too much. So remember, things that you do could be extremely risky depending on what you get into. So having said all that and the warnings and things like that, let's talk about how everything starts with Bitcoin, the Pi Cycle Top. So if you're not familiar, we did a pretty in-depth video about the Pi Cycle Top. Again, find that at uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. And when we took a look at it, Pi Cycle Top was created in 2019. And retroactively, or retrospectively, it could call the top almost to a T. And then it almost called the top in 2021, a little bit off, but that's just how it is. So what I want to take a look at was, well, how accurate was it? And of course, if you're not familiar, Pi Cycle Top used the 111 day moving average and a newly created multiple of the 350 day moving average, uh, which is 350 times two. When the 111 day moving average moves up and crosses the 350 day, we see that it coincides with the price of Bitcoin peaking. And I just thought about that. I go, maybe let's see how accurate it actually was. So here's the Pi cycle top and how it's called the top in every one of the cycles. And just for reference, when I talk about cycles, I mean the four year cycles for Bitcoin, everything starts with a halving. The first one was uh, 2012, you have a halving, then you get an all time high. And there's a dip and there's a reset. And the same thing happened again in 2016. There's a halving, uh, 2017 all time high, a dip and a reset. And then coincidentally, the same thing happened in 2020. We had a halving all time high and we're seeing a major dip and probably another reset in 2023. But I think we'll be back on track in 2024, 25, 26, 27 as things kind of work themselves out. So 
when we take a look at, again, the pi cycle top, the first one, the first uh, cycle, it actually was very close, not perfect, but pretty close. So you can see here that uh, this point, the lower part here where it has uh, the price of $141, that's what it retroactively, retrospectively took a look at and go, that was the top, but actually it wasn't. It was $214. So that was the first one. The second one is even more strange. You had, it called it out at uh, 1,090, when in actuality it was 1184. So pretty darn close. And this was the only time you had a double top in roughly the same time period, the same cycle in 2013. So it did in April and it did in December, which is actually, let me rephrase that. It said in November 29, 2013 was the pie cycle top. And then in April 2013 was the pie cycle top, which is very interesting uh, because in 2021, the pie cycle top was in April 11th, 2021. But the actual top was in November, 2021. Just something to think about. So second one, now here comes the third one. In 2017, it nailed it, absolutely nailed it. And uh, there is no higher, it's uh, hit it at 19,326, so roughly around there. So uh, I think no one could fault you for selling a little $100 off here and there, and that's a good one. And then the fourth one, of course, like we just talked about, April 11th, 2021, the pie cycle top called the top at 60,148 when the actual top was November 8th, 2021 at 67,492. So again, this are, these are still good numbers, but you have to remember this. Everything starts with the Bitcoin pump and then alt pump. So I took a look at the historical snapshot of 11th of April, 2021. In Bitcoin, the price was 60,000. Ethereum was 2,100. Finance coin was 525, XRP $1.36, and so on and so forth. And what I did was I took a look at the top ones and just compared what the Pi Cycle top, top price points were compared to what they actually were on different dates. So Bitcoin, of course, April 11th uh, was 60,000. The real one was on November 8th, and it was at 67,000. So 11% 11 difference between the top. So even if you would have sold here, you'll only be 11% away from the top. Not too bad. Ethereum, you were off quite a bit, actually. By April 11th, it was 2157. November 8th, 2015, that was 55%. Binance Coin was only 22% off, not too bad. XRP, 24%. Cardano was way off. Uh, April 11th was 127 and actually peaked at 296. That's a 60% difference. However, Polkadot, Litecoin, and Uniswap were pretty darn close, 23, 34, 30. And the biggest one that was the, the biggest outlier was Solana. It was 2793, the Pi Cycle price. Uh, the real all-time high price, 259 on November 6th. So that would have been an issue. However, this is what I always think about, or I'm starting to think about a lot more now, which is DCA in and DCA out. I'm going to dollar cost average in, like we all know everybody talks about on YouTube just about ad nauseum. But I think that's just half of the equation. You have to dollar cost average out. And what I'm going to do and I hit that pie cycle top on the next one because we got a long way to go. We have a very, very long way to go when that 111 day moving average crosses over. I will be selling 50% of all of my crypto. And I'll tell you exactly why later. I'll be selling 50% of all my crypto. Does that mean that I will miss out on some, on some tops, uh, some various ones? Yes, like uh, maybe Ethereum Cardano or something that's, that isn't even in the top 100. Uh, I could definitely be, be missing out, but that's okay because it's all about averages. So I'll be selling 50% of my crypto. And then I'll be waiting for some different signs and I'll sell another 20% and then 10% later down the road. I will not hit all the tops. And my goal is to hit 60 to 80% of the tops. I will not hit 100%. I will not buy at the absolute bottom. It just doesn't work like that. And it's gonna take a lot of pressure off me. Last time, I think it was just dumb luck of what I got to. I think this time, I'm gonna take a little bit more uh, look at some indicators. But remember this, everything starts after the Bitcoin Pi Cycle top, which we're gonna play into uh, right now. So once again, when the Pi Cycle top hits, I'm gonna take a look at not just the Pi, Pi Cycle top indicator, because that is the first one that I'm gonna look at, but there's various ones I'm definitely gonna look at. And that is the net unrealized profit and loss. I'm gonna also take a look at historic risk levels, MVRVZ score, and the, well, multiple, just to get a bearing. Now, I don't wanna do too much analysis and get paralysis by analysis. I just wanna look at these and go from there to see if I'm in the right ranges. Again, 
I'm not here to time the absolute top at 100% or time the absolute bottom. So I'm just trying to get close as I possibly can. So retrospectively, if we look back at, uh, we, we know the pie cycle top, the top was uh, April 11th. 2021. So if I was to, on that day, take a look at the NUPL, let me just uh, blow this up here. And what I like about this, these are, uh, this is from Look Into Bitcoin. And these charts are available for free. They're high quality. I love to use them, first of all, because they're free and they're great. And it makes things very simple, right? When you're in the pink range, it's probably a good idea to, because this is when everybody's uh, greedy, probably a good idea to take a little bit of profits, maybe, and also in the orange uh, part as well, optimism anxiety. When it gets down to the, the green area, probably a, a decent time to think about accumulating. We talked about this uh, at length on the channel, but if we take a look here, we can see this expanded view and we can take a look all the way back to 2010 and uh, go forward. So what I'm gonna do here is of course, we know that the Pi cycle top was uh, April 11th. So I will uh, zoom back in so you can see it in all its glory and just take a look at where we're at. So again, if I was looking at the Pi cycle top, and I think, okay, April 11th, yeah, the 111 day moving average crossed over. So this could be the time to sell. Maybe I'll take a look at the NUPL just to make sure. And just so everybody's on the same page. Uh, and again, we, we covered this at length on the last video, I have a plan, but just to make sure everybody's here. When we take a look at uh, the NUPL, the indicator is derived from market value and realized value. Market value is the current price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. So you've got some whales that haven't moved them for quite some time when Bitcoin was 100 bucks. So by subtracting realized value from market value, we calculate unrealized profit and losses. Unrealized profit and loss estimates the total profit and loss, paper losses in Bitcoin held by investors or profits. So again, as time goes on and prices uh, fluctuate, you can see this is a pretty good one to take a look at. So again, if I'm taking a look at April 11th, I'm in the orange zone, which so I could say, okay, well, it's not down here and it's not in this uh, uh, freebie zone or point of no return, capitulation, hope, optimization. And uh, yeah, this could be one. Now I'm all the way not into the red zone, but we haven't seen that for quite some time. So if I was looking at this, I'd be like, okay, that's a second indicator that looks like it might be a good chance for me to start to take profits also. If we take a look at the historic risk levels. Now, this is from Ben's website into the cryptoverse. And it's a it's it's a great website, links in the description. It is a paid website, but it's worth it. I'm gonna tell you why. Because we take a look at these risk levels, it's another indicator which could say, okay, this looks quite interesting. So let me reset the zoom again. Again, the risk levels, as they go up, the higher they go, the more risky it is. So it's a good idea to think about taking profits when we start to peak, especially above the 0 0.9 reference range. I think we can all agree there. And there's only been one, two, three, four, five points in history in roughly 12 years. So again, if I wanna take a look at, I wanna zoom in to this area around the uh, April, 2021. Where are we here? So February, March, April 11th, I'm actually at, the Bitcoin risk level is 0 0.7, almost 0 0.8. Again, back here, it looks like it was pretty risky. However, we didn't see the bicycle top yet, even though it was a little risky, but it's high enough for me to say, okay, it's not below five, it's not below four, it's pretty risky. Again, that would be a check for me to move on. Another one would be the MVRVZ score. So I take a look at this and the MVRBZ, it's a Bitcoin chart that uses blockchain analysis to identify periods when Bitcoin is extremely over or undervalued. It takes the, the market value, price of Bitcoin multiplied the number of coins to the realized value, rather than taking the current price of Bitcoin, realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it's last moved again. And the Z score is a standard deviation that pulls out all the extremes. So again, if we take a look here, let me just blow this up so we can see it. I'm looking for, again, April, February, again, February was, it was a good time, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't too great at that time. I think we're, we're playing around 48, 50,000. So it could have been okay. But uh, down here, March, where are we? March, 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 April, April 11th. So the Z score again, above five, not in the orange zone. So I'd say, well, that doesn't really tick what I uh, thought I would, but I've got a couple other indicators, so that's not bad. And lastly, I'll take a look at the Puel multiple just to be sure. 
And the Poe multiple looks at the supply side of Bitcoin uh, as far as miners and the revenue. It's calculated by, by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins by the 360 day moving average. It uses the upper red band on the chart to show when minor revenues in, in USD terms are significantly higher. Okay. So again, if we take a look at, ooh, let's see, right around here. And we go to the April point, uh, April 11th. And almost in that uh, red band right there. So I would say yes. So again, if I took the Poil multiple, which is just for proof of work for minor things like that. And the RVC score, eh, not so much. The risk level, I would say yes. NUPL, and of course, the Pi cycle top is the one that is it. So at this point, I would say yes, I would have sold if I would have uh, done it correctly. And this is what I'll be doing moving forward. So that would take care of the part for Bitcoin. Now, the next question that you may have is, well, that's great for all these things, but what about for the alts? Because it's a little bit different uh, as we just, just saw. We can do the same exact thing. And the way that we can do that is using Ben's website. So did you know that the Pi cycle top 11 day moving average uh, crosses over the 350 day moving average times two can be done with Ethereum. It can be done with Binance coin, XRP, Cardano, Solana, no, all these things. And it can be done in one place on Ben's website into the cryptoverse. So again, we want to take a look at all of them. So let's take Ethereum. Let me, uh, there we go, Ethereum. So the Pi cycle top for Ethereum doesn't really work out too hot, honestly because uh, it's telling you that it crossed over. You're looking at 21st of May, 2017, when the ETH price is 148. But in all honesty, it went to over almost $1,500. And the last one it did, eh, not too bad. 7th of March again, 17, almost $2,000. So it'd still be 50% off. That's not too great. So again, what I would do is I would say, well, because remember, everything starts with pie cycle top and Bitcoin shooting up to the stratosphere and then come the alt. So what I would do is I would just wait and see, well, maybe we'll take a look at the NUPL. Let me change this to Ethereum. And what I wanna do, actually, let me reset the zoom. You'll notice here for the NUPL, over on the look, look into Bitcoin, it has on the right-hand side, it has the Bitcoin price. On the left-hand side, it has percentages as far as how much it's gone up or down. And this, of course, will be 100% of max range or where we were at the very, very tippy top. And of course, negative almost 50% or 42% uh, down here. However, take a look over here for uh, Ben's. For the NUPL, it's a little bit different. Uh, we've got the market cap over here and the NUPL ratio, which goes up to positive 0 0.5 and down to negative 3. Okay. We can see as we zoom out that uh, the baseline level is around, um, well, of course, we have zero here and it goes down pretty pretty negatively across the board. But if we take a look here again, what we want to take a look is we want to see around after uh, April of 2021 and what happened after there. So if I was me and I would take a look at this, again, I can't take a look forward because I would be looking at this in real time. So let's just say I'm back in April 11th right here at 0 0.479. And I think if I look back, I say, well, the top last or beforehand was 0 0.6. So maybe I want to get a little closer, maybe 0 0.55 or somewhere around there, because maybe that's not it. Because I know that Bitcoin tops and then the alt start to top. So anything after April 11th, I'd probably say it might be a good time. So let's see here, 0 0.51, eh, maybe not. Around here, 51, 52. So right around here, what's this? The 3rd of May, 2021, 0 0.5. I'd probably want to get rid of 50% of my Ethereum at this point. So 0 0.56, uh, that was uh, 3rd of May, 2021. If we take a look here, I don't know, uh, 3rd of May, where would that be? Not bad, 3,500. So we missed it by about 1,000 roughly. And uh, again, I will never hit the top, but I think it's a good way just to take a look at things of, of where we're at and uh, go from there. Again, once I get 50%, if it goes up some more, let's say it's uh, cross another, you know, goes up another 10, 20%. Well, I can sell another 20% later because I have things in reserves. I will never sell all my crypto, but I'll probably sell a big chunk. So that is that part. And then also if we take a look at uh, MVRVZ score, let's see what that would tell us. Well, again, we're at 2021 and this is Bitcoin. I need to change that uh, to Ethereum. Da, da, da. Right here, let's zoom in. So 
well, this looks tasty. See this one right here? Again, same thing, 13th of March. I'm looking at these, at these points. If I'm looking at anything above four, this would all be good times to, to sell. Again, taking a look at different charts and different graphs just to get an idea of where I'm potentially at. Historical risk levels, let's take a look at ETH. And let's blow this up a little bit better so we can see it. So again, above 0 0.9 is a good time. When do I get zero? Okay, 10th of May, the same thing. And yeah, 3,400, 3,500. Again, not gonna time the top, but it's okay. And then lastly, well, the Puel multiple <laughs> would have worked uh, when it was proof of work, but now it's proof of stake. So that just kind of goes to the wayside. Same thing with Cardano and so on and so forth. So again, you can use anything that you want to, but it's putting together these different charts just to give you an idea of where things are going to say, okay, okay, that looks like uh, it's a good time to potentially sell. That looks like a good time, it's a good time. And over time and using uh, multiple pieces of data, you can make the best decision uh, for yourself. Again, this is not financial advice. These are the things that I'm gonna be doing very closely as we move forward. And there was one last piece that I forgot to talk about, which is this. I believe in the four year cycles, like we talked about uh, at length. However, that doesn't mean that this will happen in 2025. It may happen in 2024 or even 2023 or maybe even 2026 or seven, I don't know. But the thing is you have to be aware of is you have to be conscious of the changes that could potentially take form. Don't get married to one idea like I did in the past and say like it has to happen at this, it has to happen at this way. Just take a look at the data. And when the data changes, you change. But the things that I see right here, these are things that I will still look for. Picycle top, MBRVZ, well multiple, well for Bitcoin. And of course the risk factors. If we can take a look at all those things, I think we can get a better understanding of when to potentially sell. And that'll lead me to my last two points, which are exchanges and the mentality. So uh, real quick, there's a link in the description, or if you're watching this on Dan Teaches Crypto, it'll be a link underneath this video, which says uh, the exchanges. Here are the exchanges that I use. If you want to use any of them for uh, purchasing said crypto and dollar cost averaging, I use four. I'm in America, so uh, this is what I got. FTX, Kraken, Coinbase, and KuCoin. And then lastly, I just want to talk to you real quick about the mentality. To remain calm is a superpower. Bruce Lee said that, and it holds true today. And when you see in my videos and you see that we lose 20% or 50% or whatever, I don't know, whatever it is of the day, I'm pretty much the same way I am right now. I just try to stay calm because I know that this is a natural progression. For some people, it's a little bit more difficult. And for those people, I'd recommend uh, this website which it is the dailystoic.com. And the thing was great about that, it's free. And you just sign up right here, sign up for the daily email, and it'll just give you some, some perspective from some of the greatest philosophers uh, in the entire world uh, has ever known throughout history. Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, all the different Greek philosophers that uh, really have uh, guided me a long way. And here's the last, this was the last email I got, which was today. And of course they get, they get every day. And tell me if this doesn't, maybe ring true with you, temperance. Temperance isn't about elimination, going without or moving something bad, it's about moderation, finding the right amount of something. Aristotle's famous metaphor of the golden mean, the idea that virtue usually sits between two vices. Courage is between cowardice and recklessness, confidence between crippling self-doubt and blinding arrogance, hard work between workaholism and laziness, and also chasing money between just having being financially stable. And it's, Threw that in there because that's pretty much what we're doing right here. I don't want you to get burnt out. I want you to have that mentality to go, okay, I can take my profits. I can move forward. Not a big deal. <sighs> and then there's some other parts here, but I'm going to let it go. So the, this video is going a little bit long, but uh, that is it for today. So look, I know there's a lot of information to digest. And uh, these are the things that I'm going to do. Not something that you specifically will have to do, but maybe you could uh, put that into your repertoire of things that you may be doing along the way, but that is it. So first of all, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and that is all. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.